okay? On September 8th, 2017, was when I began to know something had just dawned on me and I said, oh my goodness. You know, I, I think I just noticed something. If there, and you know, if there was anything from it, I was gonna come back and show it to you guys. This was the moment that everything in my life changed and I started doing this. About five months later, this became what I was doing full time because it was clear that the revelation of the end of days was being revealed. And I want you to hear it here in this video. This was September 8th, 2017. To the man talking right now. But we are caught up. So when are we caught up? Well, we're caught up after we see these things. You know, when is, um, when, when we look at a lot of the uh, uh, Old Testament stuff, and even some of the New Testament, you know, in Isaiah 66, before she travailed, before, you know, and, and that's the case. When we look at some of these, then we would be gone before. So what is this part here? And you know what? Something just struck me as I'm reading this, but I'm not going to go into it right now. <laughs> I love that piece. I'm reading it. I was talking about Revelation. Let me go to Revelation because we're going to go there. I was talking about Revelation chapter 12. And everybody, right, we were talking about the Revelation 12 sign. It was September 8th. And I, at this point, I didn't know the 14 years. I didn't know the Revelation of the Gospels. This was where everything changed. And I was talking about the was caught up. Remember? Second Corinthians chapter 12, the was caught up was the rapture group to paradise, the great multitude rapture in the seventh year of seals. But when we go to Isaiah 66, 7, it said before she travailed. And that's what I was talking about in the video. I said, before she travailed, and I, and I said, then that means we would go up here. And I just said, wait a second. I just noticed something, you know, and I'm like, I'm not going there now. I'll come back, right? Because the travailing is over here. How can this be the rapture of the pre-trib if the travailing is here? And one of the scriptures everybody points to is Isaiah 66, 7, that before she travailed, she brought forth. It suddenly didn't make sense, and it dawned on me. And that was the beginning of it all. It was pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib. The whole story, right? And so it was awesome. But what had happened was right around the time of this video, it was in, um, it was maybe late August, early-ish uh, uh, September. I told you guys this story in the past. I ran into this homeless guy going to one of the big bookstores not far from where I live, and they had a Starbucks attached to it. I used to always go there for Starbucks. You know me and my coffee, although I'm not a Starbucks guy anymore. And what had happened was I was going in, and there was, there was this homeless-looking guy there. And so, you know, I thought, oh, whatever I had in my pocket, and I had a few bucks in my pocket, I, I gave him everything that I had, and we started talking. And we started talking about the Lord, and he was on fire for the Lord, like I had never seen a homeless person before. And he had this very righteous indignation at these Christians walking by that, that were coming from church that would just ignore him. They wouldn't even give him the time of day, and... And as a Christian, and he was speaking as a Christian, they just ignored him and kept walking. And when I got there and I shared with them and I gave him some help and we started talking, he was telling me about it. And we started to have this whole conversation. And I said, and this is how I know the timing because I started talking to him about the Revelation 12 sign. And we were, we were talking maybe 15 minutes or so and hanging out and you know, it was all about the Lord and he was very passionate and he knew his scriptures. And I thought that was really interesting. You know, a lot of homeless people somewhat know or claim to believe in Christ, but this guy knew his word as well. And his name was John. And when I fin uh, when we were talking and I told him about the, the Revelation 12 sign that I believe this is the pre-trib, the rapture's coming. You know, I was all excited for it. And he told me, well, you know, even if it isn't, we need to always be ready and watching, right? And I said, yeah, absolutely. You know, I know that's always true, right? And so we had left. We said goodbye. He didn't want a coffee. I went in to get a coffee. And as I, I could still picture it today. As I'm grabbing the handle to go into the, into the Starbucks, I'm thinking to myself, what does this guy know? Not going to be the Revelation 12 sign? It's the Revelation 12 sign. Look at it. 
right? I'm thinking of this in my head. Oh, this guy doesn't know. But, you know, he still loves the Lord. He'll be ready anyways, right? And lo and behold, of course, nothing happened. But the reason I'm bringing it up is because, one, he said that. Two, his name is John. And three, he had this very righteous indignation for the Lord and how others, when they see a brother or a sister and they need help, they're supposed to help, right? That's what we should do to, to the best of our ability, right? To, to some extent. And nobody was doing anything until I came and then the whole story started. Well, it was right around this time that I received an understanding that things were going on in scripture. And this video on September 8th was that moment. It's pretty wild. So why, why did this John guy become potentially this quite a character in my life? Well, because I met him about four or five times in total. The second time, um, I think the second time I met him again on my own or the third time. And the second time was with my son. And I saw that he was there and my son, I introduced him to him and we chatted and so forth, just regular conversation. The third time I meet him, he says, next time we get together, we should grab a bite to eat. And I thought that was kind of interesting, right? Because I started having my suspicions about this guy because the September 12th thing, a September 23rd thing had come and gone. And I, I, I you know, I, I started getting a little suspicious about him because of certain things he was saying. And then the fourth time I meet him, I was with my wife, the fourth or fifth, I was with my wife. And so the eating part, of course, is interesting because of what we know for the workers and so forth or going to the third heaven at the banquet. So this has become a lot more interesting. And then the, the last time I met him, I was with my wife. And I know what we were studying at the time because of what my wife said after we left. We were talking with them, just having conversations, you know, in the Lord and so forth. And he said that he was trying to get enough money to go back. I think he was his family was in Vancouver. So he was saying he was trying to get some some money to go back to Vancouver. Listen to this for his birthday. And he says, because my birthday is Christmas on December 25th. And I thought, oh, man, that'd be so exciting. Right. And so. We had said goodbyes. I left. And as we're walking, I could still see this today. As we're walking back to the vehicle, my wife turns to me and she says, did you catch it? And I'm like, what do you mean? Did you catch it? His birthday was December 25th at Christmas. Here I was for a few months, suspicious, suspicious of this guy being a John, being maybe John, maybe literally being the Apostle John. You know, maybe just an angelic, right? Maybe the angel, you know, spirit filled and so forth. Never knowing if you're entertaining angels. But his name was John. He said, let's eat the next time together. He had this righteous indignation. And then he said his birthday was December 25th. And how I know what we were studying at that time is the fact that my wife said that to me. Which means at that time he that he told us, and my wife caught it, it's because at that time, about four or five years ago, it meant that that's when we were studying and going back and forth on when John was born and when Jesus was born. Was John or Jesus born at around Christmas time? And was Jesus or John born at the time of the Feast of Weeks? That's what the conversation had been, and that's why my wife caught it. So it was pretty darn interesting. And the reason I'm sharing it is because as we go further into this today, the conversation and the revelation is to the birth of Christ, which is going to be proven here today, which, by the way, about four, four and a half, something like that years ago, we had this conversation at the birth of Christ on this date that I'm going to share with you from another video called The Star of Bethlehem by a lawyer who had studied it and revealed it and came to understand it. He went on tour all around North America and probably even different parts of the world showing the revelation of the Star of Bethlehem.